Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to be having a little bit of fun with some hand cut dovetails. I've said it before and I'll say it again, hand cut dovetails are not my forte and in fact I really suck at them. But the only way to get better is to practice and practice and practice and eventually they become second nature and you'll be amazed at how uh, well you can do them and how quickly. But for now, I'm at that stage where every joint is iffy. So if you're looking for the video that shows you the foolproof method and, and how to do them perfectly the first time, you might as well shut this off because this is not the video. However, what I'm going to do is run through the method that I use to cut these hand uh, cut dovetails. And what we're going to start off with is the tools. Well, in order to cut hand cut dovetails, of course, you have to mark them out and you got to have the tools in order to cut them. Now there's a million different ways you could cut them and a million different tools that you could cut them with and mark them with etc 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 but you're gonna need or I use, I shouldn't say you're gonna need because there's always an alternative, some form of marking gauge. Now there's a couple here and uh, both are adequate to mark for dovetails um, <clears throat> but this is uh, basically what you're going to use to to score um, the ends of the pins and the tails and as well as some form of marking gauge like that you're also going to need or at least I use a bevel and a handy little thing in the shop to mark several uh, degrees or any variable of degree that you want depending on how you set it and we'll probably go with the seven degree dovetail today so I'll be setting this to seven degrees <clears throat> as well as that uh, optional an exacto blade works just as well but a marking knife and uh, you can have a schnazzy one like this or you can just use an exacto knife a pocket knife a scribe anything you want will work uh, it doesn't have to be fancy schmancy tools but some form of marking knife at least at the beginning and of course uh, the dovetail saw and uh, for this one here this is the Veritas uh, dovetail saw this is a 14 teeth per inch and uh, it serves me quite well and I really like this saw it's very solid very sturdy and uh, we will be using this to cut the angles in our board of both our pins and our tails um, but of course there's the bottom waist areas that you need to cut as well and for that I will be using a fret saw, coping saw, whatever you want to call it but this little puppy here will be used to cut out the waist areas in the bottom of each pin and tail. Um, now with that being said, how do you mark them? Uh, these are basically the basic tools. I may have forgotten one or two like a pencil but uh, these are the basic tools that you would use for cutting hand cut dovetails. Um, one I did forget of course is a nicely honed and freshly sharpened chisel. Um, the size will depend on the pins and the tails that you're cutting. But either way, how do you go about marking them? Well, let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how to do that. Now this here is the board that I'm using for the tails for this demonstration and truth be told it's pine and it's practice boards. Uh, I keep cutting the tails and the pins off of these and these are getting shorter and shorter and shorter but there's still enough there for us to work with for today. Um, a lot of videos on the internet show these guys using pine for their uh, dovetails and why do they do that? Well they do it because pine's easy to cut and it makes them look like a pro. Um, you know all these videos of I can do dovetails in one and a half minutes yeah let's see you do that in maple. Anyway pine it is and truth be told it's just easy to work with when you're learning. So the first thing that you want to do is take your depth gauge or sorry your marking gauge and whether it be this style here or whether it be the other style that I showed you earlier 
um, you want to set it for the thickness of your board. And at this point in time, I'm using a three-quarter pine, so I've got this uh, marking gauge set to three-quarters of an inch. And for the tails, which is what we're going to work on first, you want to mark the board with your marking gauge all the way around. So we're just going to mark all four sides, just like this. Flip this board over and mark this other side here. And that there is the thickness of the board marked onto our tailboard. So we have the thickness of the board marked all the way around here with our uh, marking gauge. And there's all kinds of ways that you could mark these dovetails and um, there's no right or wrong way. If you want to eyeball it, then eyeball it. If you want to do it by measuring like what I'm going to do right here, then do that. So this is a five inch wide board. So in the center here, I'm going to come out from the center mark a half an inch on either side and then I'd like to leave a half inch gap that'll be for our pins and then I will come out for another um, half an inch so in essence here what we're doing is uh, we're leaving a half inch gap between our tails and our pins and if you can see that there the center mark would have been here and then I came out a half an inch each way and then a half inch gap and then a one inch and that leaves a half inch on either side. So now it's time to mark our tails. And I've got this bevel set at seven degrees and for now I'm just going to mark the one side of each of these tails and then <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'll have to flip the bevel over and mark the other side, just like that. And once we get these done, I'll show you what we've got marked here. <clears throat> and this is our marks now for our tails. You can see one tail here, one here and one here. Now it can be helpful when you're first starting off to mark those waste areas. So I'm just going to do that with a, another pencil here and just mark the waste area so that I know what it is that I am cutting out for these tails. And I'll show you that there. Now I mentioned earlier about a marking knife and some of you may have be wondering what the point of that is. Well this is an optional step here really and you can use it if you want. Um, I've stopped using it actually but for beginners it helps that if you score each of these lines it can help you with your alignment on your saw and it can help your saw blade follow down through. So just for the sake of showing you what I'm talking about, I'll score these lines. Um, like I said, this, this is more for if you're just starting out and you're having some issues, uh, this can go a long way to, to helping you line up your saw. And there we go, all those lines are now scored. And of course, you won't be able to see that on the video, but from here now, you're going to want to cut out these tails. Uh, now, how do you do that? So I've got a piece of paper here to help illustrate what it is that I'm talking about when I'm going to tell you how to cut these pins and tails. And we'll just move my bevel gauge out of there. What you've got is your end of the board is like that. And if it's not showing on the video, I'm going to show you a little clearer in a second. And you've got your pins. And I'm just going to draw two, uh, sorry, your tails. And I'm just going to draw two tails here just to show you. Now this is an exploded view kind of thing. Like this is large. But this will be a waste area here. And this will be a waste area here. And this will be a waste area here. Now the object is to get a tight joint so that you can have the dovetail fit together 
cleanly. But if you cut with your dovetail saw down through the center of these marking lines, you're going to have a problem. And the reason for that is that that uh, dovetail saw has a kerf. And that kerf is going to leave a gap. So when cutting your tails, you want to have your saw run on the outside of that line so that the entire tail that you drew out remains intact with no loss of material from the kerf of your saw. Same on this side. Make sure that the edge of your saw comes along and cuts to the outside of your tail line. And the same will go for your pins where your tail pieces will be cut out here. Well, you don't want to be running the saw down the center of your line because now your pins are not the same dimension as what you drew out. They are now short by the kerf of the saw or the kerf of the teeth. So you want to run your saw blade right on the outside edge of those cut lines. And that's the key to getting them a little tighter fitting. And over practice and over time, that will improve for you. So we have the tails marked on the board and I've uh, explained to you basically where you want to run the curve for your saw. But the one other thing I like to do as well, and again, if you want to score this, you can, just to help me keep my blade square on the top of the board as I'm cutting the dovetails, is I like to uh, extend these lines for the tails onto the edge of the board so that I can start off with a square cut. And <clears throat> eventually with practice, you won't need to do that. But of course, at the beginning, every little bit of help that you can provide yourself uh, is an asset. So now that we've got uh, the tails marked, let's go ahead and start cutting these. So we've got our dovetail saw here and we've got our piece firmly secured in uh, the vise. And like I said, you want to be on the outside edge of that line, being the um, line for your tail. And you just want to draw your saw back and get it started. And then once you get it started, oops, once you get it started, do your best to just follow your cut down until you reach that scored line that you've made. And the same here. Use your thumb, your edge of your thumb, to line it up on the outside of that marked edge. And just cut down until you reach that scored line. And then again, here, using your hand or your thumb to uh, be a guy until you get it started. Just like that. And again, it looks simple because it's pine and it's easy to cut. But don't kid yourself, there is a bit of a, bit of a technique to this. And I know that I look a little awkward doing it, and I'm okay with that, because I also know that over time, I will improve. Okay, so we've got our seven degree angles cut. Now what I like to do is flip it over, and we have this edge right here, the outside piece that we scored. And again, you want to be on the outside of that score mark. And just gently cut down until that piece pops out. And then you can flip your board over and do the other side. Again, using your thumb to line up the saw to the edge of that score mark that you put in there earlier. 
and just gently cut down until that piece releases. Now at this point in time now we need to cut out the excess inside where the pins will go and that is where our fret saw comes into play. Now if you're really good you can follow down along and uh, go exactly on the line but I'm not that good so I'm not too concerned about having a little extra material so I'm just going to come across there and I will be using a chisel to take the excess material out. So there's one part taken out and you can see how I bring that saw blade down to the bottom of that dovetail saw kerf and while gently moving it just turn it to the direction I want. It was effortless. Not a race. Just go through and slow down at the end and that piece will pop right out of there just like that. And as far as the tails are concerned uh, that's all we need the dovetail and the saw for. Now we can go ahead with the chisel. Well you can see here that the bottoms of these uh, where the pins will go are not exactly the cleanest cut and that's because we're using that fret saw and we weren't trying for a nice smooth right across cut but what we do have there is a nicely scored line from our marking gauge and what we will do in this case is with our half inch chisel and our shot mallet we're just going to line up with that line there and just give her a little tap down like I said freshly sharpened chisel and we'll flip it over and again lining up carefully with that line we're just gonna hack down through it and there we go that's that one out and this one here as well now for my liking at this point in time I think what I'll be doing is getting a, um, a quarter inch chisel and going in there with a paring motion uh, to completely clean out the rest of these uh, pinholes. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what the final results on these tails are. So like I said with a quarter inch chisel here, I'm just getting in here cleaning up the corners of the joint uh, from the saw. We're not really working it very hard, but just want to make sure that it's nice and flush in there and that there's no burrs, you've cleaned it up. And as well on the outside um, where we cleaned off the end with the dovetail saw here, you want to get right in the corner with that quarter inch chisel and just clean it up just a touch. And <clears throat> I'll show you what we've got there. And... Um, it's not perfect, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And now we're going to move on to the pins. You thought I forgot that, didn't you? Nope. Moving on to the pins. So I've got our pin board now put into the vise flush with the bench. And guys, there's another, there's a million different ways to do this, but this is for now what I like to do. So. Like I said before, <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> so anyway, you want to line up these boards. And I've also done it where I put another board at the back here, a little proud to help the alignment this way. And I really didn't find it made that much of a difference. But in this case here, all we want to do is just, because we've already got these um, tails cut, you want to get in here with a fine pencil or a marking knife will work as well and uh, you want to mark or transfer the edge mark of these tails down onto your pin board and uh, once you get that done the process is pretty much the same as what it was for cutting the tails so I'll just finish marking this here and I'm 
I'm taking my time just trying to get a careful mark of where these uh, pins are going to go because I'd, I'd really like for this to work out to be a good tight joint. But there we have it. Those uh, pins are, are marked and just like before now what we're going to do is mark our waist areas and as well we also need to score the face of each side of the pin board not the ends though so here we are back at the tail vise of the uh, of the bench and there's our markings for our pins and like I said with our marking gauge remember it was set to be uh, the thickness of our board we're just going to mark uh, just on the, the, the faces. The reason that we don't mark the edges is because we won't be cutting those edges. Um, when it came to cutting the tails we actually had to cut in there so that gave us a guideline. But now that we've uh, got that done what I'd like to do as well is I'd like to get a vertical line there drawn just to, to help me with a guideline for where to run my saw. So just like we did with the, um, the tails, we're just going to put a little vertical line there at the edge of each of the pins, just like that. And that's going to help guide us down uh, to to give us uh, a, just a kind of a guideline of where to keep our saw uh, square so that everything fits together hopefully nicely and uh, if it doesn't fit nicely well you know what that means don't you? It means we need more practice and that's kind of what I'm expecting here at the end of all of this but I'm okay with that. So and like I said before I want to mark our waist areas and our waist areas in this case is going to be where our tails go. So there we have it. There's our waist areas marked, there's our pins in the middle and on either edge and uh, on the other side now we just have a little vertical line to help us guide that saw down. So back over to the front vise of the bench and we're going to go at this with uh, the dovetail saw again. And back at the front vise and just like when we cut the um, tails guys in this case the material that we want to keep is for the pins so that saw kerf needs to be just to the outside of each one of these lines so that we're not reducing the material of the pin with the kerf of our saw. We did the same thing on the tails and we kept the blade on the outside of that line. Now I didn't score these and you can if you want. Uh, I could have even used the marking knife to score them instead of a pencil to mark these lines and that is fully acceptable as well. But for now what we're going to do is we're going to put this little guy into our vise and just like what we did with the um, tails we're going to line up our saw using our thumb as a guide on the other side and we're just going to draw the saw back and again we're just on the outside of this uh, mark line and we're going to go down through the cut until we reach that score mark that we put in with our marking gauge. And then again for this side as well, paying attention to uh, the blade being on the outside of that mark. Just move that pin board. We're going to saw right down through until we meet up with that score mark. And again here on the outside of that pin. straight down through until we hit that score mark. So we'll just continue cutting these. 
I gotta tell you, this 14 tooth dovetail saw really does go through this pine just beautifully. Um, I'm looking forward to getting a little better at these and then trying out some maple or some walnut. And the last one here, of course. Just like that. So now that we have all of those um, pins or main lines cut, no different here now. Just like we did with the um, when we were cutting the tails, you want to get in there with your fret saw and remember that this is not a vertical cut like it was uh, with the tails. So you kind of got to angle this saw a little bit as you come across to meet the connecting line here and that piece should just pop right out. Now I don't know if you could hear that on the video but there's a definite tone difference as you're going across the stock. So you're going to know when you're getting close to the end because that tone is going to get lower and lower and lower. I'll just shut up now and see if we can hear it. Did you hear that? Did you hear the tone go from high to low as you were getting closer to the end of your cut? It's not just about the feel, it's about listening as well. So we'll just do this one. You want to try to get as close to the line here as you can, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. At this point in time now, just like we did with the um, tails, we're going to get in there now with that chisel and hack out all of that uh, excess material and clean it up a bit. You got to remember here, when you're hacking this out, these pins are on a seven degree angle. Don't be hacking straight down. You want to angle your chisel accordingly. Uh, to get in there and clean these out a little. Went a little deep on that one over the line. And again, that's all part of the practice. Now I'll just turn this over. Clean up our other side. Again, remembering to line up with that scored line that we put in there and angling your chisel accordingly. And just like we did before, we're going to get this in here with that quarter inch chisel and we're going to get in there and really clean up those corners. It really helps to have a, a nice sharp chisel here guys. You have a lot less tear out, a lot cleaner joint, and really a lot less effort. Uh, one thing to point out here. So many guys do it and it scares the crap out of me. Don't do this and then try to chisel. Don't try to hold it. Let the, let the vise hold your work. You're looking for a nice quick trip to the ER to get some stitches if you, uh, if you want to hold this by hand. Alright, so we're going to finish pairing this up on the corners just like I said. And then when I get that cleaned up, I'm going to come back and we're going to test this joint out and see how badly I did.
All right, so here we have our pin board still on the vise. See the sawdust there from the cutting. But we're just going to lay our tailboard over top and give it a couple wraps in place. Let's just see how we're looking there. Hmm. Well, what we'll do here, just to clean it up a smidge, just going to take a plane, run it over the joint a few times. And I'll tell you, this isn't going to fix any of your imperfections, I'll tell you that. What it will do though, is give you an idea of where you went wrong. So anyway, there we go, we've got that planed off. Excuse my arm in front of the camera. And let's see what we've got here. Well, you can see here, we've got a little bit of a gap up here. We've got a little bit of a gap here. Got a great big gap here. This one looks nice and tight. And on this side, you remember I said I went a little proud there with the chisel? You can see it right there. And again, here is that same gap where obviously I went a little wonky on either the tail or uh, probably cutting the pin. Uh, this here was a slip with the saw. But all in all, I mean, this is not a bad joint. Considering how bad I am at these things, I'm very happy with this because each one I do improves drastically and this is an improvement over my last one so there you go I mean uh, practice will eventually make perfect so this is actually the second filming of this video the first filming um, it wasn't that I wasn't happy with the results of the dovetails I wasn't happy with the content uh, in that I didn't think I explained it well enough so I redid all of that, and I thought, while I'm redoing it, I must well cut a new dovetail. But just to show you I'm a good sport and show you how bad those first results were in the first filming, let's have a look at, uh, well, the first version of this, shall we? And I'll just cut to the chase on it. And now that these are cleaned out, you want to test fit your tailboard in your pins. And it fits just fine. However... Let me just show you this. We have got one heck of a loose joint. And you can see the gaps there. You can see how loose this is and wobbly. I mean, for my liking, this should be way tighter than this. But again, it's only practice, and the more I do this, the better it gets. What kind of a show host would I be if I didn't show you that, hey, even I'm not perfect. Those out there that show that they're perfect on every take, I don't like that crap. This isn't perfect, but you know what? I'm happy with it, and I'm happy with it because I learned something today, and I learned that I need to really keep an eye on these joints and where that saw blade is going because it looks like I veered off a little on the sides made these a little bigger I need to align my saw on the inside of each of the lines to tighten it up on the pin cutting so live and learn and we're gonna move on and uh, of course practice makes perfect guys and I will continue to practice this alright I just want to show you guys something that first attempt was horrible, and that's okay. And uh, I was going to leave the video as is, but I decided to come back, take a second shot at it, and get a little bit of practice in. The key here is learning from your mistakes. And what we had at that last one um, was a very loose joint. And this, it, this is no retouching or anything. This is my second attempt. I just want to show you there... We still have a little bit of an issue here and a little bit here, but it is a much tighter joint. 
And what happened was I learned from my first attempt. And uh, what happened with the first attempt, of course, is I had the saw follow the lines, the cut lines, dead center. And what that did was create a kerf and a gap between the pins and the tails, the same thickness as the kerf of my dovetail saw. And that, of course, creates an issue. But live and learn, like I said, pay attention to your errors, learn from them, and it won't be long before you're doing dovetails. This is second attempt today, and what I basically did uh, in order to get this one to fit like this, now I'm having problems getting it apart, that's a good thing, is on the tails, I cut to the outside of the line of the tails. And the same thing for the pins. I cut to the outside of the line, eliminating the kerf of the blade. So basically, the kerf of the blade ran in the waist area. And by doing that on both the pins and the tails, um, I was able to achieve a fairly tight, fairly tight dovetail joint. And I'm very pleased with it. And why shouldn't I be? Um, because give me another five or six times at this, and I'll be flying through them. And I know it's pine, but hey, got to walk before you can run. All right? So with that being said, don't get discouraged if you've got um, loose dovetails. Just see what the problem is, learn from it, and move on. And there you have it. Hand cut dovetails. Uh, guys, easy as pie to make with a few um, hand tools and a lot of patience and some practice. You can have some really great joints. And although this one isn't perfect, um, I don't care because I'm very happy with the results of it. Each one I do is an improvement over the last one, and each one I do is getting quicker, and each one I do is getting a tighter joint, and I'm really happy with that. So uh, maybe what I'll do is every time I cut them into the shop now, I'll have the board already set up, and I'll mark and cut one set of dovetails to get me that practice. This is a pretty strong joint, even though it's got some gaps, uh, it's still more than acceptable uh, as a strong uh, joint. So guys, get in there, start practicing these hand cut dovetails and uh, in no time flat you're going to be a pro. And uh, those are the kind of results I'm hoping for in no time flat with just a little bit of practice. You can do the same. Guys, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.